So today I feel like talking about Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow. That book that was a sensation like a year ago. <laughs> but I read it this year. So I guess I'm late for the party, but maybe it's never too late. First impressions, general opinions about this book. Yeah. I mean, uh, but, but sure. Yeah, no, you know what? Yeah. Yeah, so from the start, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna give this book three stars. It was magnificent, but it wasn't terrible. It was fine, it was okay. And I think one of the reasons that I'm only giving three stars to this book is that it was so damn popular and beloved that it makes you think it's gonna blow your mind. And people promise you it's gonna blow your mind. It's gonna make you feel all these sorts of emotions. It's gonna change your life. It didn't. It didn't change my life. It entertained me for a bit. It was boring at times. Uh, it was okay. It was. I thought it was a lot of the parts were quite nice. It was sort of an original story. It was in a romantic love story, but there was love to it. There was a, a like brotherhood love to it uh, between friends. So that was nice. So yeah, what good things can I say about the book? It is very nicely written, I feel. Right now, there's so many books getting published, especially nowadays. They have what I would call standard writing. So it's not a style that really pops out of the page. But everybody writes similar. It's just quite bland. It's lacking taste. It lacks some passion. It lacks some style, some deep, some personal style. So I felt this book had not a very strong style, but it had a, a specific sort of uh, writing and prose, which I appreciate and I liked. And because it's not a standard story or it's not a like a fantasy or sci-fi, it's more of a modern drama, you don't really know what the story is heading and there's not really like a plot, but just the life of these two people, Sam and Sadie going through the emotions, going through what's happening to them and their dreams and what they want to accomplish and their feelings for each other, for the rest of the world, their past. Their... So there's a lot of things going on and there's not really like a plot other than these two friends, other than the friendship between, between these two people. And that was nice too. But what's tricky about story like that is like sometimes, to me at least, there wasn't a strong hook for me to be entirely interested in the story, you know? Like, either I, I would have to uh, be completely in all of these people for me to care that much about what's happening in their lives. And I wasn't. I didn't care that much about Sam and Sadie. I actually didn't like them that much. I didn't think they were fantastic characters. Uh, you can tell the author was trying to make them very round, deep, complicated people, like real life people, you know, just heroic characters from another book. So you can tell, so they have flaws, they have strengths, they have weaknesses, but <laughs> I just, I don't know. It, I, it's hard to tell why I couldn't really connect with them. Didn't care that much about them. Sometimes I felt all the trouble they were getting into, it was just them being silly and stupid and people overcomplicate everything, which is based on real life. Life is like that. People overcomplicate everything. But what was the point of seeing that on paper? What was the point of seeing that on the, on the book? I don't know. I didn't like them at all. Especially there's this whole story between Sadie and this very toxic love relationship she gets into with a one of her teachers. That was like, I bet a lot of people are gonna connect with that and a lot of women might relate to it, to this sort of power dynamic between elder, elder figures, especially teachers and stuff like that. I didn't care for that part. I thought it was quite long, it was insufferable, and it didn't really make me appreciate Sadie that much. This book is a lot about video games. These two guys uh, became friends because of video games and when they grew up they decided to work on that together and develop their own games together. I am not into video games, which is fine. 
I actually loved that part of the book to see them being passionate about this topic, about this industry, working together, creating stuff together. That was really cool. It made me appreciate the industry more. It made me appreciate that side of, it made me appreciate video games more. I don't know what I thought it was weird. It was the way their career got depicted. So I mean, they start like any other person without money, just to random people with this passion, this idea, but they actually put it off, pull it off. They became really famous, their idea becomes worldwide known, and I guess it, they get rich, they become rich, they, be, they, they kind of made it in this industry. But I didn't feel it like that in the book. It feels like, oh yeah, no, you know what? They became famous and people knew them and they went to do interviews. But it feels like a side comment to the story. It didn't feel like that actually changed their lives at all, you know? It was a drastic change because the book jumps from time to time and goes through their entire lives. So that was weird. I felt that was kind of bland, that part of the story. It didn't really make me feel, oh, they are now famous. They're now popular. How change every, how different everything is. He was just like, no, yeah, yeah, they were famous and people knew them, but you know, they still have trouble. Of course, people get famous and they still have trouble, but the dynamics is gonna change. Maybe the personality is gonna change the way they see the world. It's gonna be different. It didn't feel that way, you know? It felt like they were just the same people living in the same spot. They didn't, I don't know, it didn't transmit that idea that their world had turned and the book just goes through so much which at the same time is great and not so great really depends on the reader so yeah i do appreciate that the author took the time to put so many elements and details about their their lives it was just sometimes it felt just random like this happened to them or the he the Sam adopts a dog and the whole story with the dog. The dog looks like a coyote. Some people love that part. Oh, I don't know why. I did, didn't make me feel anything. I mean, I have a dog. I love my dog. We, you know, great friendship, let's just say. But in the book, I don't. It just felt like everything was a symbol. And I get it. It's literature. Everything symbolizes something else. It just tries too hard sometimes to be like, oh, look this, this element, this symbol, oh, look this relationship with this person and this. Oh, look. It was just trying to say something, but it wasn't saying anything. That's my point. It wasn't saying anything. I was just bored with a lot of the parts. This, this whole background story, this backstory of Sam's mom, who from the beginning, this is not even a spoiler, from the beginning, we know she's not in the picture because he's raised by his grandparents. So we know his parents are not in the picture. But then there's flashbacks about his mom, so you assume she's a loving mom, so you assume, oh, she died because she's not gonna just leave the kid. And yes, she died. There wasn't anything there, like, I didn't make me feel anything about it either. I just felt like there was just things thrown, being thrown at me, and I wasn't catching anything. The author just expects you, oh, look, this character's mom died. Isn't it tragic, isn't it? Yeah, it's sad, but you're gonna just take death and mourning and expect people, oh, what a masterpiece, great, this is a, this is so true, when you lose your mom, it's so sad, let's put it in a basket of the great ideas ever, no, that, you need to give me more than that, and to me, the book didn't do that, it didn't give, it didn't give more than that, it was just throwing sad things, obvious sad things, and expecting you to do the rest of the process and feel sad and feel emotions about it, but the book wasn't doing a very good job, especially because the mom wasn't such a relevant character, she was just barely in the book, I don't know. I do, if you, I think if you take the whole story of the mom, it wouldn't change the book that much for the people who actually love the book. It wouldn't change it that much. So I wanted to say that the book has a lot of stories, a lot of elements, a lot of things it goes through. And I finished reading it like two months ago, maybe. And if you ask me to tell you everything that happens in the book, I wouldn't been able to because most things didn't stuck with me. I got I, the general idea stuck with me, but. Everything else, all, all, all those little details, nice stories, anecdotes, gone in the wind. Don't remember it all. So it wasn't such an impactful story or not impactful enough for me to remember it. As I said in the beginning, it's a nice story. It has great elements to it, 
but it's not such a big deal like this book was so huge everybody was talking about it it was was picking it up and i love it i love it so much the characters it's not gonna it's not gonna leave you indifferent i'm gonna be on the other side if you feel if you read that book and you didn't like it you are not alone i'm i'm, I'm with you i mean it's not that i hated it i like it just fine it's just that in it's not even the author's fault it's just how everybody received it and everybody was talking about it i don't think the author was trying to change people's life maybe she was i don't know i don't know what i'm talking about but it didn't change mine at all it just made me be every time i read a review and every time i saw people being so happy but i was like but what was i missing what didn't i i see about this book it didn't connect with it that much now if you haven't read the book i'm gonna go through some spoilers here of a huge thing that happens in the book that that bothered me a lot it bothered me a lot uh and i thought it was so lazy <laughs> and and i bet people love the heck out of that part of the book and i was not having it so here it is so we know the main characters are sam and sadie they're best friends they love each other they want to work together they love each other plat platonically of course i'm sorry i'm just going through this branch here and then there's this third character who is not as important as Sam and Sadie. He's not like main character, but he's a very strong presence in the story. And he's Max. He starts as being Sam's best friend. And then he's more, he, he's been taken to the story as, as becomes as well Sadie's friend. But I always had trouble with this character, with Max. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I almost died like Mufasa. So, I was always wondering, what was his role in the book? What was his role? Because Sam and Sadie are so well-rounded characters. They're so flawed. They're so, they have so many problems. They go through so much stuff. Max wasn't like that. Max was the most stable character ever. They, they mentioned he has, he has some issues sticking with relationships. So, he dates people and they, they just, he just drops them and he doesn't... But he seems fine. He's not complaining about stuff. He's not sad. He doesn't go through major stuff like the other two who are all the time having something. They're all the time just something happens. Max is just trying to... Uh, I don't know where I'm walking. Max is just, um, you know, taking down fires. He's just trying to fix everything. He's the best friend for everybody. He thinks what's most beneficial for Sam and Sadie, for their company. So he's just there to help and support and be nice. And I was like, this is such a weird card. I mean, why? So he's just there to be likable for the audience. But, but he was having no impact on the story. So I was always concerned about that character that if, if, we, if, you, take him, if you take him off the story, it wouldn't be that different. It wouldn't be, he has no impact, real impact. So then what happens at the end of the book, Max gets killed and he dies and I was like of course of course he died of course that was that was his role in the book I finally understood why the author included him in the story he was there just to die that was his role that's what that, that's why he wasn't that flawed he, he didn't go through major things because his role in the book was to be put on people fell in love with him apparently and when he's killed everybody feels terrible that was his idea so, for example, in, in another movie, I don't know if you watched uh, James Cameron's uh, The Way of the Water, Avatar The Way of the Water, I'm going to spoil it as well. There's another character there. So, we have the blue people, I don't know the names. We have the blue people, Jake is the dad, and his sons, his children. There's four children. We have the older son, who is the most stable character in that movie. He's always trying to protect his younger brother. He has no, he's not going through any stuff, through any identity issues. He's just there. He's just there going through the motions. The second brother, the youngest one, he has trouble. He, he's always getting into problems. He's getting scolded by his parents. He connects with the wrong animal. Everybody's always on his case. So we are, we are supposed to identify with him because everybody goes through stuff. Everybody goes through shit, so you can say, I identify with the second character, with the second brother. I, I get his pain. Then there's Duke. I, that's the only name I remember. Duke is the tiny one, the little sister, the younger sister. She's there to be cute and tender, and when she's in trouble, everybody's like, oh, the little one is in danger. 
Then there's the hippie one. I don't remember her name. Kitty, Kitty, the hippie one. She's there to be like the weirdo who connects with the earth, with the nature. She has, there's some mysterious to her. Nobody knows who, who her dad is. So there's a bunch of stuff going through her. So she has also a role in the story. But the older brother, what was his role? I was watching the movie. I was like, who's this dude? I keep forgetting who's, ah, it's the older brother. Ah, yeah. He had no role. He had no part in the movie. Everybody was fine with him all the time. He wasn't having anything. He had no personality. And then what happened at the end of the movie? He gets killed. He gets killed. Ah, so he was there to be killed. And everybody around him feels affected by his death. And they go through mourning, which is a feeling we all go through. So we can empathize with those characters. I think that's horrible. I think you shouldn't include characters just to kill them. These characters are just written to be killed. Both the brother in James Cameron's Avatar in Max and in Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow. They're just there to be killed and you to feel sad and, and mourn their deaths. That's it. And I think that's lazy. You shouldn't do that with a character. Because at first I didn't connect with Max. I didn't connect with Max because he was so stable. He, I don't know what he was. I don't know what he was. I bet a lot of people love him and Max and they cry when he died. But I was always wondering what, I, I always felt he was going to betray them. And that was gonna be his role. He's gonna, because it will be unexpected. He's gonna be, he seems so nice, so great. At the end, he's gonna be the bad guy, maybe. No, he was there just to die. And that, so that was even worse. <laughs> because I said, I should have seen this coming. Of course, he was there to die. He had no other role than to make us feel sad. Imagine if Sam dies at the, in the middle of the book. Every, nobody will be having that. Like, why is he? He's the main character. That would be great. Maybe a weird thing happening, but Max? We don't need Max. Like, who was he? Like, I might be entirely wrong. Maybe the author didn't plan away, but I'm pretty sure she did. I can't really tell. If I talk to her and I ask her, did you plan to kill Max from the beginning? When I bet you she would say, yes, that was destined to happen. You can tell it so much. So characters should go through a process. All of them. Sam goes through something. He grows. He changes. He learns new things about himself, about what he feels about Sadie. Sadie changes as well. She learns from her mistakes. They become different people. Max is just there. Max is just there. You can say, oh, yo, he changes. He he finally gets into serious relationships. That's, but that was never, he wasn't never feeling shitty about not having great. He was just there. He was just doing his own thing. I don't know. He always bugged me as a character because I didn't really get what was he, what was his, what his deal was. That's all I can say. I never knew what his deal was so that was bugging me when he died he clicked like this i don't like when that happens in a book like they grab a character they kill him and oh that was the point of the book oh mourning oh grief we oh, this book is so deep because it's dealing about grief it's dealing about a person dying and look this person is sad because this other one it's so it's a very easy thing to do i'm just saying like we i just went through mourning like two years ago now I feel it's kind of, it's lazy, it's lazy. I'm not saying don't kill characters. I'm not saying don't do that and make people go through mourning and grief. Yeah, you, of course you can kill characters, duh, of course. But don't put include characters just to kill them. Especially when that character, is pre his presence is in the entire book. Like Max is there the whole time up to like the 90% or 80% of the book when he gets killed. He's there the entire time and he had nothing good to offer. <laughs> That's what I would say. So that was my problem with the book. And I'm pretty certain people will, will argue that the book is deep and profound and great because it deals with these heavy topics. And I disagree. It's not a heavy topic. It is a heavy topic, but it, it executed it terribly. It executed it terribly. Just killing off characters, it doesn't count as, a, as, as being a deep book. In which this book is trying to pull like, oh, I'm talking about video games and relationship. I need something more, a, you know, a climax. What's the climatic part of this book? There cannot be a big explosion because this is not action. There cannot be a dragon because it's not fantasy. There cannot be, you know what? Let's kill a character. That's the easy way out. Let's kill a character and everybody's sad at the end. And that was it. That was the ending. Okay. Sorry. Not for me. I wasn't having it. That pissed me off a lot. And that's why I was going to give the book like four stars. And then I took it down to three stars because the last 10% or 15% was just people dealing through their grief for this character who I didn't care about at all. 
Again, this is my opinion. I'm not hating on the book. I always say this. This is all in good fun. I'm glad the book is doing great. I always like when books do great and authors do great. People should be reading more. And it's great that people connect with the book. It's great. The, the movie is the... The book is getting a movie. So great for the author. She's been on TV. She's been on different interviews. She's doing magnificent. I'm jealous. I wish I could be going through that. So, you know, good luck to her. Good luck to the book. Good luck to the people who love the book. And I hope they get a great movie or a great TV show. It's easy to screw these things up. So I hope they create a fantastic adaptation. And But to those who didn't really like the book that much, I'm here with you. I'm here to share your pain. <laughs> um, yeah, that's all I can say. By the way, this is my first video. I don't know why I'm doing this. I just like to talk about books, mainly to complain about them. I'm such a pain in the ass, maybe too negative. I have to make a video about a book I actually like and enjoy and, and feel like people passionate about and they grab it and they kiss it. I don't have the book physically because I usually read in Kindle. I got Tango. Ugh. So, yeah, hope you like the video. Maybe you don't because this book is very beloved and what are you going to be like? You didn't get it. You're an idiot. You're a buffoon. You're just jealous. And they might be right. I can give you that. You might be right. I'm not taking any credit for anything. Not literally. I'm just rambling on. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Look the pretty forest. <laughs>